Hey everybody, and today we're doing a kind of a mini review of the Lenovo IdeaPad 100S. This is a ultra cheap, like $100 uh, laptop you can pick up from Best Buy or any of your other fine retails. I actually picked this thing up. I was actually planning on buying it, but I uh, didn't buy it. And then I was randomly going through Best Buy one day and I saw that this computer was on, uh, was on clearance. And I was like, oh, look at this computer. So I decided to go ahead and uh, snatch it up real quick, and it only cost around for me it only cost me around eighty dollars because it was a uh, because it was, it was a open box actually. Not me, it wasn't clearance; it was open box. And I was even able to get it down a little bit more because it had a little slight ding on it, it had a little cut on it, and I was like, oh, uh, let me go ahead and see if I can get it knocked down. And yep, I got it down to pretty pretty cheap, so I got a lot of money off of that. But taking a look at the device. It's uh, really nice. It's got a. Uh, there's multiple colors. There actually now, there actually now is a uh, albino version, an all white version, which is the version I want because it looks really nice. It's a really nice computer. The all white version is really nice. But I have the one that has the black, that has the black uh, design, the red top. You can see pretty much the uh, your speakers on the bottom. It's got really got really big feet on this, which actually helps so that way you can uh, so that way the audio actually is uh, audible. Uh, when it's on the desk because obviously the speakers on the bottom if you put on the desk it's going to muffle the audio but with the C on the bottom actually helps to uh, make it where you can still hear things properly so on the side you have these two USB ports and on the other side you have the the power full size HDMI headphone jack and micro SD card slot and this hinge actually is a 180 degree hinge you see it actually will go 180 degrees in terms of thickness, this is a really thin computer. Um, let's go ahead and uh, close it up and compare you and see the size. See, it's very thin. It's pretty much the thickness, uh, a little bit thinner than a book. Let me go ahead and get a ruler out. And we'll measure the actual thickness. So at its thickest point, it is around less than 20 millimeters. So at its thickest point, is like... I would say 15 millimeters, maybe uh, go as far as to say maybe yeah, I'll probably say safe, safe say it's 20 millimeters at the thickest point, and uh, and it's tapered when it tapers down here, it goes as low as around I would say uh, close to 10 millimeters. So it's pretty thin. It's a uh, as you can tell, it's quite a small machine. Let's go uh, let's go and compare it to a larger machine, uh, which I have down here which is the one like this. This is a Lenovo Yoga 900 which is the obviously the 10 times the price of this computer and you can see in terms of general size it's pretty much, this is a 15 inch one, I forget, I think this is a 13 inch um, and maybe even smaller than that, but you can see comparing the size of the two of these um, obviously, it's, obviously, it's, little, it's, obviously it's about 12 inch I think is what this is but you can see it's a lot smaller than your average, uh, your average uh, I don't think it's a 15. I think it's a 13 inch. I don't know, but I forget what the size is of this. But you can tell that in terms of this, like this is pretty much a regular size laptop. And comparing the two, they are this is pretty much like a nice little small, almost close to a almost a little bit, a lot, lot bigger than netbook, but uh, around that netbook size. Now this guy is pat, punked, uh, punching a uh, AMD Atom, and we'll go not AMD Intel Atom. We we'll go ahead and pull up the uh, system specs on this guy. This has a uh, AMD Atom uh, Z3735F, uh, 1.3 gigahertz. It is a dual core and has about two gigs of RAM. And keep in mind, this is a 32-bit. Um, this is actually a 64-bit um, processor, but you pretty much are forced to install a 32-bit, not only by the BIOS, but as well as uh, it doesn't make much sense to put a 64-bit OS on a 2 gigabyte when a machine was only 2 gigabytes of RAM. Not to mention you're not going to find drivers, which also going to actually the driver thing, you cannot downgrade this to Windows 8. It's impossible. They will not let you do it. I was able to get as far as to down. I'll, I'll downgrade. I've got the only. I got it down to almost all the drivers were installed except for the audio and the battery controller. And uh, since I was uh, lacking the battery controller and audio, it was pretty much useless. Um, and also, there were some, some issues with the video drivers, so I was unable to get brightness to work properly. So pretty much, uh, you can downgrade it. It's impossible. The keyboard is really nice. It does have a little bit of flex to it. Let me get some to show you that. When you are pressing down on keys in the middle, it will actually flex. So let's go ahead and get this. Uh, I can see that there is a lot of flex in the middle of the keyboard. I think you can see this good. Let me go ahead and bring this down so you can see it. Oopsie. But yeah. 
you can see the keyboard does flex in the middle when you're typing. It is, it's not as visible in camera, but it's very visible in uh, person. Uh, in terms of how to affect uh, typing, it doesn't really affect typing too much. In terms of typing on this keyboard, I do think it's kind of, it is a little bit harder due to its size. It's a very small keyboard, but it's not that hard to get used to. Um, when comparing that to a normal size keyboard on a normal laptop like the Yoga 900, uh, you can see that they're obviously, they're pretty much close to the rigid, pretty close to the same height. But the width is obviously completely different, not to mention this one has the keys on the side for the, uh, those. My battery dead? Better not be. But yeah. These, uh, now, looking, now, looking more into this machine, there's a trackpad. Trackpad's a little bit of annoyance. The trackpad is, uh, quite small. And it does, I have noticed issues where, where I'll be using it, and it would just, like, jump across the screen. And I don't understand what that problem is. I think it may just be my trackpad's dirty, or I need to restart it so it can recalibrate. But I've had issues with it doing weird stuff like that, which I don't understand why it does it, but it just it does it. So that's what I look out for. Also, these clips on the bottom, um, I've had it where the clips on the bottom actually were to break. There are two clips here that were right by the trackpad, so that way it keeps this bottom half together. And when these, clip, when these clips break, like mine did, the, uh, the bo this computer, the bottom, this portion right here will actually be to pull up and making it hard to use the trackpad. I got to the point where I could not click on this one and I had to either use like right on the edge of this or I had to just tap. That, that's how bad it got. And what I had to do is actually had to open it and put super glue right here and super glue this bottom section right here back together. And once doing that it's perfectly fine but that's just, you know, just a look out. Another little, 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 another issue about this guy is that if the battery gets, another issue one is that when you put it to sleep uh, it's not, it, it will, it will still drain power and it will drain power quite a bit because it doesn't seem to know how to hibernate and maybe, maybe it's just my, I mean, to figure out how to get it to hibernate, but it will not hibernate for me and will drain the battery down to nothing. And when it drains the battery down to nothing, you have to, not only, not, not only do you have to obviously plug it in to get it to turn back on, but you have to wait a long time before it'll do that because you plug in the power, push the power button, you'll notice that the power light will come on. And then the battery light will start to will show up as orange, and then it'll begin to start blinking with the power light turning off, meaning that it won't turn on. Which is quite an annoyance that you cannot get this thing to turn on when the battery runs too low. And you'll have to let it charge for a while before it even lets you think about turning it on, which is quite annoying. But that's just how it is. And I think that's because the battery doesn't charge as fast, and they probably have, they're probably in fear that you would, uh, of course, turn it on and the battery will be too low, and you would run it. And of course, your CP would take so much power that it would actually not be able to charge the battery at the same time, or it would take a very long time to charge it. So it's kind of a, I can understand the idea for doing that, but it's very annoying. It's, it's just not, it's not, not that good. Another thing is this display obviously is not IPS. It actually is quite, it does look a little bit washed out at times. Keep in mind, this is a $100 computer, so all these issues you're having, I mean, all the issues that are, that are associated with it obviously are not things to just say, oh, I mean, that's excusable, but I mean, it's a $100 computer, and it's, the issues are not that bad. I, it does have issues with Wi-Fi, but it seems that with the new Windows Anniversary update I have on here, it doesn't seem to have as many issues. Um, also, I did a, if you look back on my channel, I did a video when I first got this computer. And when I got it, it didn't have any drivers installed, and I couldn't use a mouse or keyboard. I actually had to get a mouse and keyboard plug into USB to get it to work. Because even if you were to do a if you were to do the reset PC option on this machine, it would do the same thing where it would actually not have a driver for the for the uh, the trackpad, mouse, and associated things because everything's done on this computer through G GPIO and all that associated things. Pretty much, it's all done. It's all done. No SPI. I think it's SPI. The, uh, the keyboard, mouse, and everything's done through SPI, and the drivers are not immediately installed by default. So. It uh, will, of course, make it where you cannot use such devices and, of course, make it where your computer can be fucking useless. And that's a very annoying thing that I wish I had an answer for, but the only way to do that is to, of course, inject the, the drivers into the actual factory image, which apparently they did not do, or they did not resolve the issues why it will not, why it will not actually be installed properly. This guy comes in with Windows 8 Home, uh, Windows 10 Home, I actually have Windows 10 Enterprise, LTS, B, no, just Enterprise because uh, I'd rather my machine run the way I want it to run with, uh, I, don't, I don't trust the factory images. It comes with a little bit of bloatware when you get it, so I would also advise to uninstall that bloatware while you're at it. Um, a few more, th uh, one of the good about this machine, this is obviously, the, it has really good battery life. The battery life of the machine lasts very long. 
it's as it's a very it's a very low power machine. It will get very hot in this corner, like when I'm watching a YouTube video. This whole corner, but this is this is actually where the motherboard is. Take this section right here because I've actually opened this machine up, and I think right around here is where the motherboard is. The rest of this is just battery. Um, so keeping that in mind, this section will get very hot, and uh, keeping that also in mind that I've noticed that when I when I was, when I spend a lot of time watching videos in Edge. It will eventually get to the point where it's like this whole computer starts to slow down, which I think is because underclocking begins to begin to overheat. Because this machine has no heatsink, it's actually trying to use the magnesium chassis that the keyboard sits on to cool it, which does not work. So uh, I don't know why they didn't just put metal in there. I guess because metal costs too much money. Or they, like put a and just put a sheet of uh, just anything, honestly, to get this thing to cool down a little better. But obviously that just doesn't work. This is exactly quite uh, uh, also seen in their. Uh, in Lenovo's Chromebook line and their other idea book Chromebook that I've owned at one time, the very thick one. And this is uh, some pretty much the same thing happened. I, I would actually like to see the Chromebook. I think they have, they have a Chromebook version of this. Um, I think I think that was the one I owned was the, I think it was the 100, uh, I think it was just Lenovo 100, but I don't think it was this thin. I don't, I do not remember exactly, but the, I wish they would actually make a Chromebook in this form factor that was this thin, because this is very thin. It's very portable, keep that in mind. It's very portable. It's nice to bring around. That's why I I'm starting to use a computer again because this computer is a very good computer to, for me to have when I'm on the go. And I just need to like look up something record or pretty much in the car or something and I'm just getting bored of just sitting around. I can of course whip this thing out and uh, use it for whatever I plan on using it for. Because a machine like this, my Lenovo Yoga 900, is obviously a very expensive computer. And I don't always like having it around because I'm scared I want to bust the beautiful screen on this machine because uh, the screen is very thin on it and I don't want to break it. But there's that. So uh, yeah. That's pretty much looking at the Lenovo Yoga 900, no, <laughs> Lenovo Yoga 100S. I may do a video of the night on the 1900 on my impressions on it. I do because I think the thing is a really good computer. It does have, a, it actually is a very little flaws on it. There better not be for the thousands of my dollars I paid for. There better not be no flaws with it. But there's very little flaws with this machine. But yeah, this one has uh, quite a few issues, but it's not enough to make it. Whereas, like, I don't suggest, I don't, I don't suggest not getting it. It's a hundred dollar computer. If you just need, if you're looking for something for school, or you just need a computer to use uh, temporarily or such, this is a, probably a good thing to go with. It's very cheap. Um, it's very thin, and it's very portable. Good, extremely good battery life for this for this price range. For the price you're paying for this, you, uh, I'm surprised you can find a phone that will give you the amount of battery that this thing will give you. This is uh, it's a really good buy. I think you should, I really do. Uh, also, say I really do. Uh, can't stress enough. It's pretty. It's a really good buy to get. Uh, one of the issues that these USB ports are very fiddly on things they want to accept. I noticed cause I plugged in a USB DAC into this, a Turtle Beach USB DAC, so I can get the fiber, so I can get fiber out, fiber optic uh, output for my audio, and uh, that didn't work. It would uh, just not work. Period. I think I've had a few times where some devices just wouldn't work at all because I think it's too power, which can explain by the way this, this, this USB ports are installed. There is actually pretty much a very thin, flat, uh, flat flex cable that goes from the CPU uh, from the motherboard over to here, and it's such a long run and such a thin cable that I can kind of see why it can't provide enough power. So uh, it's not an excuse. Obviously, they should have just beefed up the cable and stopped being so cheap. But, I mean, what do you expect? It's a hundred dollar computer. So I keep saying it was a hundred dollar computer, but yeah, it's a, it's still a really good machine. I would obviously suggest getting it, but keep in mind there are some flaws with it. So yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video.